Green June Lima Charlie Hound me over. See if he can pick up the suspect vehicle. Tonight, the search for survivors continues and the hunt for the bombers begins. Probably like 30 or 40 feet from the front door that he'll be forced to walk out. Americans around the world wondering where they can and cannot feel safe. Kilo one, we are on station. Over. The scale of the attack suggests Al Qaeda. No sign of him. We are parked right out front. Today, we've had a national tragedy. So there's been a declaration of war by terrorists on the United States. I feel like I might have picked someone up, literally bumped into someone I'd seen three times. The very picture America most feared. It sounds like we have someone who's aware of us. The image terrorist most wanted. Investigations have revealed that there are accused terrorists and war criminals who have escaped justice. A number of them are living in the United States and Europe, seemingly forgotten by the world. Until now. Lieutenant Colonel Roger Carstens, Green Beret. If he kills someone, everyone's gonna like just scratch their head and say, God, we knew that this threat was there. David Crane, international war crimes prosecutor. Make no mistake about it, this team will track this individual down. Adam Soralski, journalist. Bottom line, CIA and FBI have been looking at this guy as far back as the 1990s. And Scott Tyler, Navy SEAL. We've confirmed where he lives, we know where he's at, and we can go get him anytime we want. I still believe in justice will prevail. Mahmoud Darkanzanli, age 50. Spanish have charged him with providing logistical and financial support to Al-Qaeda, specifically in connection with 9-11. This guy's been described as one of the key figures of the Al-Qaeda terror network as well as bin Laden's financier in Europe. Here you've got somebody who's been branded a terrorist by the US, the EU, even the UN, and he's walking the streets of one of America's closest allies. The UN's Al-Qaeda Sanctions Committee has frozen his assets and subjected him to a travel ban. And Interpol has placed him on its most wanted list. True, but he maintains his innocence. But look who intel officials connect this guy to. 9-11 ringleader Mohammed Atta and two of the other 9-11 hijackers, Marwa al-Shahi and Zia Jara. Take a look at this video. This is the 1999 wedding of Mohammed Atta's roommate. Dark Azanli's there with two of the hijackers you mentioned. Bottom line, CIA and FBI have been looking at this guy as far back as the 1990s when they discovered that he was working with bin Laden's personal secretary, Wadi El Haj. El Haj was using Dark Azanli's home address as his business address. El Haj is serving a life sentence at the Supermax in Colorado for his role in orchestrating the U.S. embassy bombings in Kenya and Tanzania. So what's the status of this case and where do the Spanish fit in now? In 03, the Spanish indicted Dark Azanli and a number of others. They discovered that in the months leading up to 9-11, he had traveled to Madrid around the same time as Mohammed Atta. That's right, Dark Azanli and Atta reportedly met with another top Al-Qaeda operative. And officials have been pushing the Germans to extradite him. But Germany has twice rejected that request. Let's get into it. 9-11 was a day that changed America and a day that changed me. It refocused my life in terms of chasing down terrorists and bad guys who may actually harm my country. Dark and Zolly, to me, is the one that got away. It's more than just the attack on the World Trade Center. It's the U.S. Embassy bombings in Kenya. It's the Madrid bombings. It's the attack on the USS Cole. To me, it's amazing that this guy's walking freely in the world. This guy has some of the worst titles you could ever imagine. Bin Laden's financier in Europe, Mohammed Atta's friend, friend to the hijackers, and yet this guy's living free right here in Hamburg. Right now, I'm headed to the airport to pick out some rental vans. We're gonna get the vehicles, we're gonna dress them up, we're gonna check out the area, which will give us a little bit better idea of what we need to look out for. Good to see you again. Glenn is a former Navy SEAL, sniper trained, he's a corpsman. He comes very highly recommended from other people that I've worked with in the community that I have a lot of respect for. How's your tent? It's not super dark. We have two rental cars. We were really looking for something as dark a tint as possible, because that's just less work that we have to do, finding the proper equipment to dress these cars up for surveillance. Let me check out yours, too. It's pretty see-through. 
we could literally black that whole back out. Yeah. We rent cars pretty much every city that we go to and it's always like a scavenger hunt. We want something that's gonna fit in, but we're also limited by the equipment that we have to have. We should be able to get a camera up in the back if we pull these seats out. The team just touched down in Hamburg, Germany, and I'm going to go meet with Brian Gould. Brian's worked in the intelligence and military worlds for over 20 years now. If anyone's going to know what's going on with our target, it's going to be Brian. All right, Dark Gonzali, the guy we're dealing with, he's as deep in as you can possibly get into supporting and, and, and actually supplying logistics and management to, to the terrorist network, so Al-Qaeda. He funneled everything from 9-11 for those people. They did all their initial training here, getting some flight schools arranged they used in the States. It was all done right here out of Hamburg. We know right now that this area, we know he's still connected. He, his office runs out of his house. The best way to hurt these guys was to hurt them logistically and financially. And this guy's the key to it right now in northern Germany. Is there still a lot of interest on him in Germany? Uh, the German side, BND, is still watching him. Maybe there's some American intelligence agencies watching him. Well, my counterpart uh, is an ex-German SEK guy, um, still in the law enforcement community. Uh, he's been really great assistance here, picking out some of the other things going on in the target. You might have guys from our intelligence or law enforcement agencies actively moving in and around the target set. Do you think it would make sense if I met your contact? Most definitely. He's watching our back right now. The only concern I would have at this point is, is that the other side has to know what kind of valuable information Dark Gonzali has. And, and the problem would be is that if they think we're getting close to getting him extradited, how far will they go? They might kill him and they might kill us in the process. They're notorious for it. When they decide to clean a target, Everybody goes. So, you know, you guys be careful out there. Brian was able to bring me up to speed and he linked me up with a member of the SEK, German's Elite Police Force. Brian was saying that the target is going to be very complex. Why is that? We think when we've been there, that there are a lot of organizations, a lot of people are looking for him, they're watching him. So the area is very crowded. I don't know if it's his own people who are watching him, but I don't know if it's people who are different by government or what else. With all these people on top of the target, then how come he's not being arrested or extradited? So I think uh, our political system is not allowed to, to extradite people from our own country, our own citizens. All right, well, I guess we have a hard target, don't we? I think it is a hard target. I hope that we can come to an end, that we can force to extradite him, and I hope politics have the possibility to, to go forward. I just finished having a meeting with a former member of the SEK. His bottom line, that this target is so dangerous that he is under the active surveillance of multiple foreign intelligence services. I'm on my way to meet up with David Crane, who's working with me to engage German judicial officials about the case of Mahmoud Darkenzanli, a Syrian national who became German and is connected to some of the 9-11 hijackers. There's no question that the Germans are standing in the way of this man's extradition. The real question is, why? A huge explosion rocks downtown Nairobi, Kenya. We have reports that several Americans are among the dead. I was in Nairobi, Kenya on a temporary duty assignment to promote trade between the Kenyans and the U.S. government. My driver, Moses, and I were in the office by ourselves and uh, we heard this bam, bam. And that was the last thing I heard. I, I woke up many hours later underneath the rubble and I knew it had been a bomb. And I, I immediately thought, well, I can't see. But then I thought, well, that's just momentary. This isn't gonna last. As I laid there, I started getting very anxious, very afraid, and I started bargaining. Please don't let me be blind. Please, God, don't let me be blind. I said, take one eye, but don't let me be blind. I've had over 30 surgeries. The blindness um, isn't going to change. You barely survived an attack that was committed by Abu Hajar and Wadi El Hajj. And here's a man, Mahmoud Darkenzani, who's living in Germany, who was working with these guys, moving money for these guys, apparently. Does it bother you that Dr. Zanli is walking free in Germany? It's kind of scary when you think that there are those left out there that are still free. They will attack again. If there are people, especially this gentleman, and I say that loosely, that perpetrated 
helped finance, helped do the logistics for the American Embassy bombing. He should be extradited. He should be tried. He should be made to be accountable. There comes a time when people have to stand up for what they believe. I lived in Germany for five years, and I loved the country, and I loved the people. And I believe that Germans should do what is right. Do what is right for the world. Save the rest of us. strange. It seems like this case is like an iceberg. We're seeing this small part where the judiciary has opposed this guy's extradition to Spain. There's something going on here. I think we have to be very careful while we're here in Berlin because I think that the federal government is going to be very, very cautious as to how they're going to play this. What I don't get is Germany is always at the forefront of these issues, whether it's terrorism or human rights, and here they are seeming to protect an individual who's been designated as a terrorist by both the U.S. and the U.N. They have allowed a 9-11 co-conspirator to live in Germany without any kind of sanction for that mm -hmm. and have been dragging their heels uh, for years after the Spanish have legitimately asked to prosecute him for what they think uh, are terrorist activities surrounding 9-11. How do you think we should proceed? Tell them what we know to the extent that we think that's appropriate. Tell them we're willing to work with them and let's see where they go. How do they want this to be presented to the public? because it's going public. Scott and I were both very involved with sniper work in the SEAL teams. You learned how to make urban hide sites that made it unable for anyone on the street to see inside our vehicles, but the cameras to see out. It's really amazing how effective this is. A little bit of tint in the windows and a little bit of mosquito netting, it can make you virtually disappear in here. Now, we're just gonna focus down on surveying him, finding out his movement, his habits, so that we can go in and either confront him or enable his arrest. There's really no substitute for getting your own eyes on a target area. So Scott and I broke up after dressing the vehicles. We both chose different ways to come into the target area. We looked at it already on Google Maps and on street maps that we had acquired. You can study satellite imagery until the cows come home, but until you actually get on the ground, you're never gonna notice all of the subtle nuances and the little changes and stuff at street level. See this blue sign coming up on the right? Right above it is the mosque where Mohammed Atta and the other 9-11 hijackers met, um, at least according to our intel, uh, to plan the attacks on September 11th. One of the main objectives of this mission is to draw a connection between Darka Zonli and this mosque. There's a yellow building coming up on our right-hand side with the white railings on it. That's us right there. I'm literally right in front of the house right now. That was one blacked out van we just drove by. I wonder who's in that one. So we did a few laps through the areas just looking for good ingress and egress routes until we actually saw with our own eyes, realized the double parking situation, the nature of the tree cover, how tight those streets were. It was really a good thing just for us to get eyes on and to plan the surveillance for the next couple of days. We're not gonna interfere with other agencies, but it's critical for our independent investigation to get a visual of Dark Kazanli. How did those meetings go? The big one I had was with the, uh, the guy from the SEK. Uh, his main point was that there's multiple foreign intelligence services on the objective, and the guy's already alerted to other forces trying to surveil him, so he's gonna be expecting us. Okay. Yeah, it might, uh, we did a drive by the target area yesterday just to check it out. There's a few vehicles that may already be surveilling. We're gonna try to push back over to the area today. It'd be nice to pick up movement. Let me show you what we have going on on the map here. We are down here in this area. Okay. This is the target. There's a, there's a mosque down right in this area here, and it's right above a gym. 
We'd like to catch him uh, going to the mosque and see if there's anybody else that he's associating with. It'll be interesting to, number one, maybe see if he, if he changes routes or takes the same one. And secondly, I'd, I'd be curious to see if he's conducting counter surveillance, trying to lead us off the objective before he takes off. And the bottom line is we might be able to get the German authorities to take quick action and extradite him. So I think I'm going to focus my efforts with David Crane to go talk to the Hamburg district attorney. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, because we can watch him until the cows come home. But... There's got to be action at a certain point, so. Good luck. Catch you later on. Talk to you later on. All right. Hello, this is Roger. Hey, Roger. Adam. How are things on your end? There are multiple foreign intelligence services that are already surveilling this target. We need to be wary in terms of the way that we move around the objective area. I think it's going to make the objective a little harder than I'd planned, and yet I don't think it's taken us into the, uh, the undoable. We met with the top guy at the Ministry of Justice. What all did he say? Deportation is automatic between EU member states. So Germany has to deport the guy. That's not what we've heard before. That's actually good news. We'll see what the prosecutor up in Hamburg says, because apparently the ball's in his court. We have it on the record that Germany has an obligation to deport the guy to Spain, and yet they're not doing it. So the question is why? And who's preventing it? Usually when something bizarre like this happens, it's because an intelligence agency is protecting someone. If that's the case, Crane's going to come up there and he's going to lay the groundwork with the prosecutor in Hamburg. If what the Germans are saying is true and that extradition is supposed to be automatic, I want to know from the Spanish why it hasn't happened. All right. Bye. When you look at this case, you've got a guy who's considered a prime Al-Qaeda suspect who's been walking free for six years. As a journalist, I worry, is there something I'm missing? Maybe this is a case the Spanish don't care about anymore. Maybe that's why he's walking free. I guess the only way to find that out is to talk to Dolores Delgado. She's the chief coordinating prosecutor for counterterrorism here in Spain. The Darkens Only matter, it's really her case now. Spain is obviously a leader in international or universal justice. How important is kind of prosecuting terrorism cases to you? El terrorismo se puede combatir si todos los países nos implicamos en su persecución. It's very, very important to fight against the terrorism. We have a responsibility to apply the law. Would you say that Dr. Gonzalez is a common target for you? He is a terrorist for Germany and for Spain and for the US and for France. For, it's for everybody. All of us are victims of these kind of crimes. Alemania tiene herramientas legales para la colaboración con España para su persecución. O se juzga o se entrega. Y esta es la verdadera forma de combatir el terrorismo. Spain indicted Mahmoud Darkhan Zanli in 2003 and it seems like it's been frozen in time. Siempre hay interés por parte de España de enjuiciar a una persona frente a la que se tiene evidencias de culpabilidad. España pidió y reclamó la entrega extradicional de un terrorista a Alemania. Alemania, por problemas legales, no entrega a este terrorista. But it seems to us that this case has great importance. This is somebody who, by many accounts, was a key figure in Al-Qaeda. Is this case important to you? Quiero decir que este caso es importante, es muy importante, porque es el primer caso que tenemos de relación internacional con Al Qaeda y relacionada con España. Y esto es un caso importante, porque se ha comprobado que había una red de trabajo. Pero es la primera vez que nosotros se investiga, se juzga y se condena. En España tenemos una condena en este caso. Eh, Spain wants uh, justice to be done. The Spanish are telling me they're still very interested in this case. I've got officials in Berlin telling me they're required to extradite Darkens Only. Somebody needs to figure out what's going on in Hamburg. Well, we're off to Hamburg, and it's important that I get there. Adam's gone, and he's doing his thing with the criminal side of the, the house, but I need to get there and uh, meet with the senior prosecutor to get the authorities involved. It's this individual himself who has the power and authority to uh, order his return back to Spain.
Guten Tag, hier Herr Carsten, ich arbeite für Dr. David Crane, ein amerikanischer Rechtsanwalt. Und uh, wir wünschen ein Treffen mit Ihnen, wenn es möglich ist. Vielen Dank. Tschüss. Er sagte, warum? Ich really muss wissen, was die Meeting ist, bevor ich eine Meeting nehme. Er sagte, was ist Ihre Telefonnummer? Wenn wir ihm nicht sagen, dann werden wir nicht die Meeting bekommen. Wenn wir ihm sagen, was es ist, werden wir ihn schocken and not get the meeting. My question to you is, do we just go ahead and tell him why we're, why we're calling? The reality of the situation is that if we get a meeting, it'll be not him. Then we need to think about what we'll... Guten Tag. Ah, oh, danke, danke. Ja, ich, ich habe eine Unterhaltung mit Dr. Crane gehabt. Und er hat mir gesagt, dass er wünsche eine Unterhaltung über Information über eine Case für Mamoum Darkanzali haben. 30 Minuten nach 14. Wunderschön. All right, so we gotta, we gotta pull all these seats out. So let me jump up front and I'll hand them out to you. So we'll set up the cameras and then we'll get a comms check, set up your vehicle, and then we'll roll. I'm gonna spread the uh, tripod legs out a little bit so we can get a little bit more maneuverability. That looks really good right at that setting. I think that's gonna work. Hey, what's going on? We were just heading out to do a, uh, a little surveillance on the target area. Now that we have you, we can probably run an SDR, which wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay. If there are all these groups watching this guy right now. See if we can pick up on them. Yeah. yeah. I can drive this vehicle. You're familiar with the target area, and you know that cafe we were talking about. If you wanted to set up down there, see if I could run some spooks by here. Cool. I'll uh, see if I can pick anyone up trailing you then. You know what? Let me just, let's just pull out the computer here. So here's the, uh, here's the cafe. This is somewhere I was thinking about putting a camera. I'm gonna come into the target area this way from the west, and I'm gonna try to park right out in front of the guy's place. And my goal will be to walk down conspicuously, and I'm gonna try to run him through this little spider web down here. I'll head back, I'll get in the vehicle at that time. I'll give you guys a call. We can just uh, pull off an RTB on our own, and return right. to base. Okay, sounds like a plan. Just about 150 yards from the location, or about one street parallel to the north. I, I just, I'm gonna do a little surveillance detection route, see if anyone's following us. Do you see any like cars that are super blacked out, tinted, vans, any like weird looking people? That van that I was concerned about, it's here again. We don't know who it is. It could be his people, it could be another agency. Scott walked by the objective very overtly so that any other source conducting surveillance would know that Scott was interested in the target. He then proceeded to walk off the objective. The key is to try to see if anyone follows him. If anyone does follow him, it's up to me in a stationary position to see who is tailing him or Glenn, who's gonna be roving around either on foot or vehicle to pick up that what we call tail. Hello? We're on the bridge by the water, by the cafe. Why don't you go ahead and come by and I'll check your back. into a store on the way back to the vehicle and literally bumped into someone that I'd seen about three times. It was a little awkward. So it sounds like we might actually have someone who's aware of us. How about the vans? Yeah, I did. I noticed those vans. They're, uh, they're parked very strategically on both ends of the block on either side of the target house. It, it looks pretty fishy. Let's RTB and uh, figure out how we're going to progress. I think we'll need to go ahead with the surveillance tomorrow. 
After getting briefed from our intelligence source, it's clear that there are other agencies surveilling this target. So of course, it's definitely a threat, but it's worth the risk for us now to be on target to try to get positive identification. Apparently the story on this dude we're looking at is that he's got a lot of people who are very interested in his location right now. But our job is to kind of continue with the eyes on target. So I'm thinking today, uh, let's set up with the wagon. One of us in the back, pull in, find a parking space. We'll probably have the other vehicle staged somewhere in the area. We have potential chase vehicle, potential vehicle just to swap out, just in case Absolutely. the first one gets burned. Our ultimate goal here is obviously to do an arrest and get this guy extradited. If we can pick him up going anywhere else or associating with anyone else, it makes our job easier on Saturday if we do go forward with the confrontation, as long as he doesn't flee, so. Hey, rocks, paper, scissors, one takes it, loser goes to the back of the car. <clears throat> Come on, ready? Ranger Lima, Charlie, call me over. Hey, Roger, this is Glenn. When your driver gets out, see if he can pick up license plate number 159 or two. That's the suspect vehicle. Roger, 1592, we'll do that over. We ran a series of SDRs yesterday, and we believe that the target is actually active. However, the benefit of confirming PIT outweighs the risk of a confrontation with another intelligence organization. So we're pushing in tight and conducting the mission today. Net call, net call. Air One has arrived on station. We are above the target residence. We have a camera crew in a helicopter today gathering aerial footage. We pulled them off so that they can monitor from the air. We're pretty much alone in the objective area, which is just where we want to be. We have a perfect position. We're currently uh, probably 50 or 60 feet from his apartment with the uh, flower boxes on the third floor and probably like 30 or 40 feet from the front door that he'll be forced to walk out of if he leaves or arrives. I spotted his car. Subject vehicle's at corner two, northwest side. Roger, it looks like someone is in the apartment. Since I've been here, three windows have opened. Over. There he is. That's Dirk Azanli. Net call, net call. We have a visual on the target. Glenn, this is Roger. He's getting in a taxi and heading in the opposite direction. Chase car, flying in. Chase car, chase car. He's really hauling gas. You're gonna have to move fast. He made this left. Hold on. This guy's really moving. We're gonna have to catch up. Scott, this is Roger. Glenn is in pursuit of the target. They are both moving out at a high speed. Chase one, this is vehicle three. We're gonna take the wide perimeter and look for the target. Copy that. All right, I got him right up ahead. I'm gonna try to move in closer. Probably trying to draw out a tail. Hang back and don't burn yourself. He's nearly at the end of the block. Jesus, this guy is moving. Hang on, he's turning. He's probably running an SDR. This guy's driving like he's trying to dump us for sure. All right, red light up ahead, hang on. Breaking 140 k per hour. This guy's definitely trying to draw me out. I think we're just coming back to his house now. I think we're going in circles. Dude, he's going up that one-way street. Gotta go the other way. If I follow him up that one-way street, I'm burned. Kilo one, do you have eyes on? Chase one, he made that right. He is two streets over. Confirmed, he's running parallel two blocks east. Try to get eyes on. Picked him up, I got him. We're blocked by the van, hold on. Kilo one, chase one, you have visual? Chase one, we're on him from the air. We're really close to that moss from yesterday. 
Let's take a gamble. All set up at the mosque. Chase One, this is Hilo One. There are three taxis at the stop sign. We cannot tell which one is him. Can you re-engage from the ground? Negative. We're blocked by the van. I got nothing. Vehicle three, Chase One. What's your 20? We're pulling into location right now. We're going to try to find a place across the street. Go ahead and break off and set up down the street from the mosque. Chase One in position. Vehicle 3 in position. No sight of him. Give me a heads up when you got eyes on. Copy, Chase. He must have entered before we got into target. Standing by on location outside. I'll try to pick him up when he leaves. Hilo 1, we are on station. Over. side of him. This is vehicle three. Do you have eyes on from across the street? Negative. I have no sign of the target from my location. I haven't seen Dark as only yet, but there's a lot of activity out front. I don't know, man. Maybe we missed him. So I've taken a chance and set up to see if there could be a connection between Dark Azani and this mosque, which is an alleged 9-11 planning location. Hey, so I'm sitting on the target right now. It's pretty busy. I'll let you know if, uh, if he exits here. Yeah, bye. It looks like a lot of activity, but so far our target hasn't shown. Chase one, we have visual. He's leaving the location. He took a left in front of the gym. He's headed east. I don't have him in my sights. That's him. That's him. We got him. Pit confirmed. Hey, good to see you. Same, same. How'd your day go? Went pretty good. Uh, we confirmed this guy's location, where he was going, and I even got some really good images of uh, some of the guys he'd, he'd been meeting with. And uh, we got pit of this guy coming out of the Hamburg cell mosque. That's gonna be meaningful. So bottom line is we really know his patterns and we know where he, he lives. We set up a meeting with the Hamburg DA for tomorrow morning. Apparently he's the one with the authority to make a decision. What I'm wondering about is what has Germany done so far? Because regardless of whether or not Spain has been requesting this person to be extradited. He's got a lot of evidence against him. There's a lot of people who deserve to have that guy face justice. Yeah, and I think that it might be prudent for us to get the entire team together at some point uh, after Adam arrives and just lay all the information out on the table and let's collectively come up with a plan. Okay. All right, brother. Good to see you, man. Be good. Be an important meeting. Uh, I agree totally. We've dug around, we've had our conversations, and we have narrowed it down to, to this meeting where they're going to have to account for having not arrested or extradited this guy in over nine years. All the groundwork that you laid in uh, Berlin and all the groundwork that Scott laid in conducting reconnaissance comes down to a meeting. I mean, what, what's it going to take for Spain and Germany just to turn this guy over for an appropriate and just resolution to this uh, situation? I'm not getting a sense that anyone's uh, picking up the phone and calling each other right now. Bill, it's uh, good to, uh, to sit down and talk with you about, I think, a very important case. Uh, I think it would be helpful at this point is let's tell the story about uh, Maman Dakanzali. Herr Dakanzali wurde in Spanien verdächtigt, äh, Mitglied einer terroristischen Vereinigung zu sein. Äh, konkret äh, soll er sich äh, bei der Logistik und auch bei der Beschaffung von äh, Geld äh, betätigt haben. 
Herr Dakansali wurde dann in Hamburg festgenommen und im November 2004 war letztlich alles relativ schnell organisiert, sodass Dakan Zali über den Flughafen Berlin nach Madrid ausgeliefert werden konnte. Herr Dakan Zali quasi die Hände an der Gangway zum Flugzeug hatte, zwischenzeitlich aber seine Verteidiger bei dem Bundesverfassungsgericht eine einstweilige Anordnung beantragt und im Ergebnis auch erwirkt haben. And I imagine he uh, hung his case on the fact that he's a German citizen, that you're not supposed to extradite a German citizen. Dass das Bundesverfassungsgericht sich mit der grundsätzlichen Frage zu beschäftigen hatte, ob deutsche Staatsangehörige überhaupt zur Strafverfolgung wegen einer Straftat in einem fremden Land an dieses Land ausgeliefert werden dürfen. Das ist mittlerweile entschieden. Das heißt, auch als Deutscher, wenn man beispielsweise in den Niederlanden oder in Dänemark eine Straftat begangen hat, kann man nach dorthin mittlerweile ausgeliefert werden. Now that we've had the change to the Constitution, if Spain requests extradition again, is the city of Hamburg required to follow through on the extradition? Die, die Frage ist relativ einfach zu beantworten, aber gleichwohl prüfen wir natürlich, ob die formalen Voraussetzungen zum Beispiel eingehalten sind. Aber wir steigen, um das deutlich zu sagen, nicht in eine tiefe, eingehende Prüfung der Beweislage ein. It's almost a procedural issue more than a substantive issue. Am, am I understanding this correctly? Yeah. Because the question is, why is this uh, alleged Al-Qaeda suspect walking around Hamburg? And it sounds like the answer is, uh, laws have changed, and if this is to progress further, Spain needs to simply request extradition again. Yes. Yeah. They don't have to create a whole new case, they just have to show you that they have a reasonable basis under their law that this individual has committed crimes. Eigentlich muss man uns ein neues Auslieferungsersuchen präsentieren. And then you will do your, your duty under law. Come on. David Crane and I are currently in Hamburg, Germany, where we just had a meeting with a senior prosecutor for the city of Hamburg. He said, look, we are going to hand this individual over when we get an indictment from Spain. The issue is that uh, Spain hasn't done anything. Walking out of the meeting, we got an email saying that Baltazar Garzon, the Spanish judge who issued Darkazanli's original extradition request, may be willing to meet with us. He is the person who could have the authority to reinitiate the extradition process. I just got back here to Hamburg after having a series of off-camera discussions with U.S. intelligence sources. Everyone's hopeful that the Spanish will carry the day and will be able to have Darkens Anli extradited to Spain. This guy's been under indictment for years. The Germans have had an obligation to turn him over for years, and so far, Germany hasn't followed through. What's going on? Good to see, see you. you. Yeah. How you doing? Good. good. All right, good. So Dave and I went and talked to the uh, Deputy Prosecutor General for the city of Hamburg. He looked me right in the eye and said, we have an obligation to turn individuals over to another European Union country. And we asked, in other words, you will extradite Darkazan if Spain resends its indictment. And he said, we can make that happen. And what that does is it raises a question. Do we go through with a confrontation tomorrow? Or do we treat that as a method of last resort and instead try to call Judge Garzon, who issued the original indictment, and get him to resend it? In a way, I'm kind of curious what your thoughts are, since you're the one who's been on the target all this time. I think we all want to see this guy put away for a very, yeah. very long time. And I would hate to go have that confrontation and have him go underground when, you know, we could see him uh, yeah. arrested. Well, you know, the key is justice for the victims of the 9-11 uh, attack. And to do it yeah. well is not confronting, but to actually see him uh, walked out uh, in, in handcuffs and turned over to the Spanish. So the German position is, we will act as soon as Spain resends the indictment. We have an obligation to act. We're going to send this guy to Spain. That's what he said. They're waiting for Spain to do it. All right, let's go. Adam and I just landed in Madrid. It's late and we're exhausted. We have an early morning meeting with Spain's preeminent counterterrorism jurist, Judge Baltazar Garzón. We have a responsibility to fight against the terrorism. Baltazar Garzón is Spain's chief counterterrorism judge. He actually issued the indictment against Mahmoud Darkanzanli back in 2003. 
And as he told David Crane on the phone, he still wants him. The best way to hurt these guys was to hurt them logistically and financially. Dark Gonzale is as deep in as you could possibly get in Al Qaeda. International law is very complex. And there's so many different factors that sometimes it takes years to get things done. Not so in this case. This case is very simple. Only one thing needs to be done. Spain needs to reissue their indictment. It's kind of scary that there are those left out there that are still free. The Germans have told us they're going to act. The Spanish have told us they're going to act. So we came here to Madrid to see what the Spanish would say on camera. Adam Strauss, how are you? We wanted to talk to you a little bit about the case of Mamoun Dachanzanli. I had a chance to talk to the prosecutors in Hamburg, and they made it clear that if Spain would simply resubmit an indictment to Germany, Germany would be happy to send him back to Spain to face a fair trial. Al día de hoy, sigue siendo una persona que está en busca y captura. Hay una orden internacional de detención en contra del mismo. It took us a long time in Germany to talk to different officials and try to understand what the holdup was. I think this investigation, uh, your investigation, is very important because uh, the uh, collaboration, in many cases, is not uh, to the country and country. This is a necessary another factor. For example, this program, this investigation. The fact that the Germans can now extradite him does this change things? The change in the legislation in Germany uh, was very important because this change possibilized the reception to Mr. Duncan Sally to the, for the justice in Spain. Do you think there's a chance now that, given the German position, that Mahmoud Darkenzanli could be extradited to Spain to face justice? Yes. Finally, the extradition will be possible. Will you be in touch with German officials now? Yes. After this, uh, this program, I think that it's necessary, uh, this contact. Great. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Judge. Thank Appreciate you. it. Yes, sir. It's amazing. For six years, Mamoun Darkenzanli has walked free in the streets of Hamburg, despite an indictment connecting him to 9-11. Today, Germany is saying that they will extradite him if Spain resends its request. Spain is now saying it's on its way.